Cancer cells are not only like pathogens in that they can evade and suppress the immune system, they're also like pathogens in that they rapidly evolve resistance. That is a serious problem for cancer therapy. So we will now discuss how to manage the evolved resistance of cancer cells. Chemotherapy selects for rapid evolution of resistant clones. This is the same principle that we saw with the evolution of antibiotic resistance in bacteria. Strong selection is producing a rapid resistance response. There are some alternatives to chemotherapy that are being explored. There's targeted immunotherapy. There is adaptive therapy where the motto is farm it, don't nuke it. And then there is targeting public goods. So the same range of options that we can think of in trying to control the evolution of antibiotic resistance is also being examined for controlling the resistance that evolves with chemotherapy. It's pretty hard to kill the cancer without killing the patient. After all, the cells that we're trying to kill are cells that are very closely related to the healthy cells in the patient. They're human cells. The more drug we use, the stronger the effect is. That's the dose response curve. Usually there's a phase one clinical trial to see what the tolerable dose might be. Then there's a phase two clinical trial that gives evidence that the treatment is effective. And then there's a phase three clinical trial, which is randomized and placebo controlled, uh, and it's expensive. So normally by the time a drug has proceeded through these three different levels of trial, success at the end is defined now as extending the life by an average of a few months. So it's a frustrating situation. We aren't really helping the patients as much as we would like to. Here's a typical clinical experience for a patient with cancer. Patient arrives in the clinic with a late stage cancer. That means it has already metastasized, it's throughout the body. Surgery is therefore considered ineffective. Not all of the metastases could be found. A cytotoxic chemotherapy is started. Usually it's once a week for three weeks. It attacks all of the proliferating cells in the body. The patient's hair falls out. The gut lining sloughs off. The tumor shrinks or even disappears from an MRI or an X-ray. However, please note, a mass of a million cells is not visible on an MRI. So there could be a lot of metastases left in the body of the patient and they would be invisible after chemotherapy. A few months later, the tumor reappears. App application of the same drug has no effect. So the doctors try a different drug. And that's exactly how we would select resistance in the lab if we were trying to select resistance in a cell line or a bacterial culture. So the standard way of using chemotherapy is the most effective way to rapidly select resistance. There are different kinds of chemotherapy. There are cytotoxins that kill cells. So 5-FU, it blocks DNA synthesis. Cisplatin binds the DNA and causes problems that trigger apoptosis. They both kill cells. There are targeted therapies like Gleevec. It fits into the BRIC ABL cancer gene, so that's a breast cancer gene. Tamoxifen blocks the estrogen receptor, so for the estrogen-sensitive uh, breast cancers, tamoxifen is used. Gefitinib blocks the epithelial growth factor receptor. These therapies have been shown to select for cells with resistance mutations. Gleevec resistance comes from point mutations in the pocket where Gleevec binds to brick abl or to an, its amplification. And the mutation is often present before therapy. So it's in that diverse genetically heterogeneous set of clones. Gefitinib resistance is in a mutation to EGFR. 5-fluorouracil resistance is in mutations and extra copies of TYMS. And the result is that treatment fails, especially, it fails especially in smokers and in people with late stage tumors. Now, what about targeted immunotherapy? 
the immune system can be used to target cancer cells. It stimulates cytotoxic T cells and it suppresses the immunosuppressive cells that increase up to tenfold in cancer patients. So, there is, so this is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. There have been some dramatic successes and some disappointing failures with extremely virulent cancers, including ovarian cancer and melanomas. In some cases with melanomas, targeted immunotherapy has cleared the cancer out of the body of the patient completely. In others, it hasn't worked. And it's, a, it's about a 50% success rate. There are multiple immune pathways in the tumor microenvironment that are both inhibitory and co-stimulatory. And they can be targets of therapeutic manipulation. So in this diagram, but the, the pathways are indicated here by the arrows. Here is the tumor. Here is a dendritic cell or a macrophage. Here is a T regulatory cell. Here is a tumor specific cytotoxic cell. Okay, so it's a cytotoxic D lymphocyte. The MDSCs, those are myeloid immunosuppressive cells that, incre that increase up to tenfold in cancer patients. So these need to be suppressed to allow there to be effective anti-tumor activity from the cytotoxic T cells. And the particular approaches that seem most promising are those that block these inhibitory receptors here on the T reg cells. So this particular receptor here and this particular receptor here, PD-1 and CTLA-4. There are also evolutionary approaches. We, can, we could use, for example, drug cocktails that require different mechanisms for resistance where each drug is targeting a different resistance mechanism. That makes the uh, evolution of resistance highly improbable. However, the combined side effects of multiple components of a cocktail could be unsupportable or even fatal. So even one chemotherapeutic drug often is causing extreme discomfort to the patient and two, three, or four of them together could actually kill the patient. Secondly, there's adaptive therapy which uses lower doses to control cancer growth while slowing the evolution of resistance. We've seen a similar idea with uh, antimicrobial therapy. And then it's also possible to target public goods to disrupt cooperation within a tumor because tumor cells actually cooperate with each other in a way that's rather like the social life of bacteria. So here are a couple of replicates of the same experiment in which adaptive therapy was tried in mice. And so in both of these, the standard treatment, which is in red, results in just as heavy a tumor burden as no treatment at all, but with some delay. So no treatment at all is the control, that's the black. The standard therapy, which is a strong dose, causes the evolution of resistance. And with some delay, the tumor burden then rises up to the same level as if there were no therapy at all. But adaptive therapy, which is in green in the two replicates, keeps the tumor burden low. It doesn't wipe it out, but it keeps it low. And that could extend life and reduce suffering. It won't eliminate the cancer, but it could buy time for the patient. The final option is to target public goods. We saw that as one of the options being pursued with antimicrobial therapy. Cancer cells produce growth factors that suppress the immune system and that stimulate angiogenesis. They are public goods. A cell that did not produce those growth factors could grow faster. So it could be a cheater. Growth factors are a public good and cells that produce them are susceptible to invasion by cells that do not produce them. So the therapy would be to remove cells from the tumor knock out the genes for the growth factor, and then reinsert, actually put the modified cancer cells back into the patient to compete in the clonal competition with the ones that are producing the growth factors. So they have everything that made that a good clone except the growth factors. The modified cells then spread, 
the concentration of growth factors falls, and the tumor collapses for lack of communication. Evolving countermeasure is quite difficult any time there is a mutation in a public good gene. So there have been tests of this idea in cell culture, and they have been promising, but tests that in vivo have not yet been done. So to summarize, resistance to chemotherapy, just like resistance to antibiotics, evolves rapidly. Life, lifespan in cancer patients could be extended with alternative therapies. Immunotherapy shows a lot of promise. It's not cheap, and that has implications for health policy. Immunotherapy is, is rather expensive. But it has been effective in some previously untreatable cancers. Adaptive therapy does work in mice, and it is now being tested in clinical trials, so we can see in the coming years where that goes. Targeting public goods, such as growth factors, shows promise, but it does need additional tests. It's a good idea, but at this point it's preliminary.